Left Peru and sailed to England alone. There he met the Browns and they took him home. Now a new life has begun. He's Windsor Gardens' favorite son. Cause he always does his best to help everyone. When a problem appears, he never misses a beat. And always finds a way to land on his feet. Has his very own unique point of view. Looks at everything as if it's brand new. He is friendly and polite. And he tries to do things right. But he gets in sticky messes just the same. He's curious and speaks his mind, but trouble's never far behind. It's Paddington Bear, he's one of a kind. I'm Paddington Bear. Rolling the bandits, pinafore by a legs. Jasmine second, and runs ragged on the outside at 10 to 1. 10 to 1? It's not 10 to 1. It's only 12.30. Did it again. Someone should tell the announcer, Seamus O'Reilly, that he's got the wrong time. Here are more toothpicks to add to your collection, Paddington. We shan't have any left for our teeth if you carry on picking winners like that. So, Paddington, which horse is going to win the next race? Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. I pick horse number six. The horses for the next race come to the starting gate. At 10 to 1, number 6, Lion's Shed. Fancy saying it's 10 to 1 when it's only 12.30. You'd think working on television he'd know the time. They say horse racing is a game of seconds, but Mr O'Reilly isn't even getting the half hours right. At least it hasn't stopped me from picking the winning horses. Winning horses? Psst. Bear. Did I hear you've been picking the winning horses at the races? Oh, yes, Mr. Curry. I've just won another 30 on the last race. Have you now? Well, Bear, why don't we have an afternoon at the races together? Then you can pick some winners for me. I've never been to a real race course before. All right, Mr. Curry, but before we go, I have to get something to take to Seamus O'Reilly. Don't be long. I'll call a taxi. There's no time to be lost, <laughs> so I can win a fortune. <laughs> Why are you taking a cab, then, if you haven't any money? Yes, Mr. Curry. Perhaps we should have taken the bus. Well, you see, um, if you can wait until after the race, I'll have plenty. Well, OK. But you'll have to leave me something as a guarantee you'll be back. Here, take this. Wait. I need a jar of marmalade. Promise to take good care of my suitcase. There's a surprise inside for Seamus O'Reilly. A surprise? It's just a little something to teach him a lesson. A lesson? I wonder what kind of surprise... Hello. Good day, sir. Yes, good day indeed. What's this? Sounds like ticking. Ticking? A surprise? A bomb! Help! Police! There's a bomb in this suitcase! My beautiful car! There's a bomb! Stop! There's... Put it down, man! Gently now. I'll contact the bomb squad. Control, this is an emergency. There's a bomb, I repeat, a bomb at the race course. All right, Bear. Which horse will win the next race? One, two, three. Hurry four, up, Bear. Five, six, There'll be plenty of time for seven, eating later. Eight. Horse number eight will win the race, Mr. Curry. Right. And what are you putting on the race? Well? I might risk three toothpicks, Mr. Curry. Three toothpicks? No, oh, never mind. I'll be back. Me too, Mr. Curry. I have to find Mr. O'Reilly. I wonder where that bear's got to. He's probably getting more marmalade. He seems to find it a help when he's picking his horses. It seems to work. <laughs> I'm not going to wait like a commoner. <clears throat> Look at that! Hmm. Ah! Oh, ah! Ah! Oh, ah! 
And it's Poison Ivy on the outside. Devon Ember in it. No, Poison Ivy. Poison Ivy takes it at 5 to 1. Excuse me, Mr. O'Reilly. It's not 5 to 1. And it wasn't 10 to 1 when Runs Ragged won the race. What? What's this? The horses for the next race are being turned away from the starting gate. There's some kind of disturbance in the car park. <gasps> it's the bomb squad. They're having trouble with a taxi and a suitcase. Suitcase? That's my suitcase. There isn't a bomb in it. I've got to stop them. Twelve quid on Toasty. Horse number eight in the seventh. Sorry, sir. The race has been delayed. Bah! A young bear has just informed me that the suitcase is his and that there is no bomb in it. But can he get there in time to stop the bomb squad from disposing of it? And he's off, in the middle of the pack. A length behind two ladies and parting on the outside. Paddington! The bear is a neck ahead of the security guard and passing a peanut bender and heading into the bend. And he's through and out. The bear's picking up speed, moving left, moving right. He's only a few lengths from the taxi and... Oh, hey, what a surprise move. It's the final stretch. He's made it. There's no bomb in the suitcase. It's all a mistake. It's only a clock for Mr. O'Reilly. What excitement, ladies oh. and gentlemen. Oh. Thanks to that bear, the next race is about to begin. Go, Toasty! Go! 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 Last place! Oh, why did I trust that bear? Ah! You kept saying 10 to 1, but it was only 12.30. 10 to 1 is the odds, not the time. Right, it's not the time. So that's why I brought you the clock. Well, thanks all the same. I want to talk to you, Bear. The horse you chose lost, and I've lost all my money with it. Let me get this straight. This young Bear picks horses, and you bet on them. Perhaps, Mr. Brown, you would care to tell the live audience how you pick the winners. It's very simple, Mr. O'Reilly. I take a spoonful of marmalade, then I count the chunks, and that gives me the number of the horse. Marmalade chunks? I lost all my money on marmalade chunks! So how do you plan to pay me for the taxi fare? That's what I want to know. That's the last time I go racing with you, bear! Perhaps in the future, you should be like Mrs. Bird and stick to toothpicks. They're much safer, and you can always use them again. There it is, Mr. Brown. One of the most beautiful mountains in the world. The Matterhorn. Look out! <gasps> oh, oh, it's so peaceful. So serene. Did you say peaceful, Mr. Gruber? <laughs> My chapter on Switzerland won't be complete without a photo of the Matterhorn. But so many have been taken, it's nearly impossible to find an original angle. I'll get you an original photo, Mr. Gruber. Bears are good at impossible tasks. That's the spirit, Mr. Brown. I'm off to interview a famous yodeler. Let's meet back at the chalet to see what you've got. Oh, dear. It looks even further away through the camera. What I really need is... Help! Oh. What I really need are some skis. May I help someone? Yes, I'd like some skis, please. You see, I find going on the mountain rather dangerous without them. Oh! And could I trouble you for some poles? They seem to be popular. Of course, sir. Oh, dear. I'll see what I can do. Oh. Will you be taking those goggles? I don't think so. Now that I have skis, perhaps the other skiers won't be such a menace. Whoa! Watch it! I just need a place to put them on. Oh. Oh. 
seems as good a place as any. Now, what did the ski lady say? Oh yes, remember to bend your knees. Oh well, perhaps I'll skip that part. Oh dear, I seem to be in reverse. Uh, tell us, Franz, do you think you can win? A downhill competition in my own country? <laughs> Nothing can stop me. Hello. No! <laughs> Amateur skiers? They shouldn't be allowed on the hill! Good afternoon. Is this the right stop for the matter? Oops. Um. Oh, hello. Could you tell me? Look out! See. Pleasure to meet you. I'm Paddington Brown. Franz Wiedmere. It's you! I'm very sorry. I'm afraid I'm having trouble with my poles. Oh, look at all the skiers! Hello! <coughs> Hello! Hello there! All this fresh air is making me hungry. Can I offer you some marmalade? No, thank you. Oh! We're almost at the top. <coughs> Wait! Stop the lift! Stop! Stop! I must not miss my place in the race! Look! Hey, France! Over here! Having second thoughts? Say cheese? No. <laughs> this is all because of that bear! No, this isn't the right shot of the mountain. I'll have to find a better angle. Perhaps I should have asked the ski lady how to stop. Hmm. Amateur? Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, coming school. Hey, look out! Ah, that's it, I'll get that bill if it's the last thing I do. Where's Franz? He's on his way. He had some troubles with the lift. Hello. I didn't realize there was a bear entered in the downhill. There isn't! But you can't go now. That bear is still on the course. Not for long. Whoa. Just wait till I catch that bear. I think I'm getting the hang of this. In fact, it's rather fun. If only I knew how to stop. I wonder what's keeping Mr. Brown. Uh, two skiers competing at once. Most unusual for the downhill. No word on the identity of the small skier in front. It's Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown is competing in the downhill. But he seems to be challenging Franz to clock his fastest time ever. Hello there. You! Get out of my sight! Pardon? The wind! I said get out of my sight! Turn right? Are you sure? This is unprecedented. It appears our mystery skier has taken a right turn and is now heading for the ski jump. Oh dear. I hope Mr. Brown knows what he's doing. <gasps> oh no. Oh no. I can't look. So that's how you stop. That's one way. Franz, how did you manage such a fast time? Let's just say I had a little incentive. Mr. Brown, you won't believe it. I got the film developed and look. They are the most original photos of the Matterhorn I've ever seen. Thank you, Mr. Brown. It was my pleasure, I think. Four pounds, four pounds, just 
to sit in a deck chair? No, mate. It's four pounds for the rental of the chairs. You have four chairs there, and they're a pound each. Four pounds. Ah! Think yourself lucky I'm not charging extra seeing the mess you've made of them. Hard luck, mate. <laughs> Enjoy the beach. <laughs> Here, what are you doing to my chairs? <laughs> Your chairs? Oh. Oh. I just paid four pounds for these chairs. Then where are your tickets? My tickets? But I haven't got any tickets. Then you've been done. Done? But I've only just got here. If it's any consolation, you're not the first to be tricked out of your money this morning. Four pounds, please. But I don't have any money left. Whoa! <laughs> Paddington? And what seems to be the problem here? A little matter of paying for the use of these beach chairs. But I've already paid four pounds, Mr. Brown. I'm afraid you'll have to say goodbye to it. It sounds like South Coast Charlie's work to me. South Coast Charlie? He's a con man in these parts. Works the beaches and swindles people out of their money. Like my four pounds. <sighs> it's disgusting, taking advantage of a young bear like that. I'd like to get my hands on him. Hmm. You'd be doing us all a service, madam. Find reporter Basil Budd and win £20. It's one of them newspaper stunts. The first person to confront him and say, You're Basil Budd, gets a £20 reward. That'll be easy. Uh, he'll be in disguise, though. Probably wearing a false beard or something. You'll need a keen eye. Oh, don't you worry. Bears have very keen eyes. There's a beard. Don't forget to meet us at the restaurant for lunch, Paddington. Aha! You're Basil Bud and I claim my 20 pounds. Let go of my beard! I am not Basil Bud! <laughs> oh. Well, I never. Little bear comes out and pulls my beard. Well, never seen you like it in my life. <laughs> That's the trouble with beards. It could be anyone underneath them. <laughs> What's this? I have you now, Basil Bud. Ow! My beard! Your beard's real. I know that! Is there anything the matter, Paddington? You're looking very down in the dumps. It seems I'm never going to find Basil Bud. You should never give up, Paddington. <gasps> What's up now? I think it's Basil Bud behind that beard. You should never give up, Paddington. Really, Henry. <laughs> You're Basil Bud, and I would like my twenty pounds, please. Go away! Hey, what are you doing? Ow! My beard! Stop! Let go! My beard! What's all this about? I'm going to call the police. The police? <laughs> no, no. There's no need. I'm fine. Yes, it was all a misunderstanding. Hey! That bear! He's the one who pulled on my beard! Mine too! I could have drowned! That's nothing! He buried me alive so he could yank on my beard! That's it! I'm calling the police! You've got some explaining to do. Ooh. I've been looking for Basil Bud to try and make up for the money South Coast Charlie took from me. He gave it quite a yank then, did he? That's one way to put it. 
What have you got to say for yourself, young bear? Pulling people's beards is a serious offence. Not if it's a false one. I have you now, Basil Bud. <gasps> oh, Paddington! <laughs> hey, you're not Basil Bud. You're South Coast Charlie. Oh, South Coast Charlie? Are you sure? He tricked me out of four pounds this morning. <laughs> Let's go for a little ride down to the station, shall we? We have other witnesses who can help identify South Coast Charlie. And if you're right, you'll get your four pounds back. And a reward to boot. Thank you, officer. Congratulations. I would be honoured to present you and your guests lunch on the house. <laughs> I said it before and I'll say it again. Bears always fall on their feet. What a great story. This will make the front page. If you wouldn't mind, I would very much like to write a story about you for tomorrow's paper, Mr... Paddington Brown. And you're Basil Bud. Oh, yes. Yes, I am. Now, if I could just ask you a few questions... May I have my £20 now, please? £20? <gasps> In all this excitement, I clear forgot about the contest. I think I'd like to come to the beach more often. It's very good value. 